Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number one of season 12. That is, we're going to study the book of Romans together. And here's my first response to this. I am terrified to the task. That was my first response this morning as I thought of opening the book of, of Romans. And my question was, it's a 16 chapter uh, treatise on the gospel. And how do you, it's this this great theological uh, treatise. And how do you eat this elephant? And I was thinking, you know what? This is an, this is an elephant that God meant to be eaten. It's a book that is meant to be read. It's meant to be understood. It's been meant to be understood for 2,000 years, and it is understandable. It's here for a reason, and it's here for us. It's here for me. It is meant to be consumed and understood. Uh, I'm supposed to understand it with my head. I'm supposed to understand it with my heart. Uh, I'm probably supposed to do something at the end of it with my hands and my tongue. So I think opening the book and asking the question, hey, what, what's in it for me? Why did you write this? Why did you preserve this? Why did you put this in my hand? God wants to be understood. And by the way, for those of you who are believers and me who is a believer, I have the Holy Spirit indwelling me, and likely he's going to want to help me with this this processly, process. So I am expectantly, I'm going to aim for awe. I'm going to aim for Jesus. I'm going to enjoy his history. Um, so obviously I'm approaching this humbly, and I think you should too. Uh, who is sufficient for this? I think of that from Second Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, the answer, uh, the short answer is nobody, but then he, he allows us to meet him there, and he wants to meet us in the mornings in his book. So the challenge here to you and to me is let's be with, I'm challenging you to be with me. I'm challenging you to be with him as we see the face of God by eating this elephant. Eat this elephant with me. And I guarantee you that not a single person who walks this walk with me, that is, walks season 12 with me, uh, will be, um, will regard this as, as a waste of time. All right, so here we go. This is Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations, including you who are called to belong to Christ Jesus. To all those in Rome, who are loved by God and called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let me just do a couple of observations here as we get started. First of all, Paul, verse 1, talks about himself. He says he's the he's an apostle, which is the highest church office of all time. And secondly, he's set apart, especially by God. He Remember, he saw Jesus personally on the road to Damascus. He had visions that uh, uh, of him, he heard things that cannot be told. So he has this intimacy with Christ, which is also the highest qualification. But he describes himself right off the bat as a servant. That's the nice word for it. Slave is a harsh word for it. The accurate word is doulos, which is bond servant. So he describes himself very humbly out of the chute here, and probably so should we. Verse 2, he is set apart for something. What is it? The gospel. He's set apart for this. He's set apart for you and for now. There's no plan B. So when we talk about the gospel, there, there's no, hey, we're going to talk about the gospel and an alternative. There is no alternative. This is promised a long time ago. It's been written in the Old Testament. He already he brings up the prophets of the Old Testament. So he gives us a shade that, hey, we're going to start from the beginning. And Jesus has been in the Old Testament. Verse 3 basically says that Jesus was in the Old Testament. He was descended from David literally in a genetic sort of a way, but he's also just descended from David in an asterisk sort of a way where he takes the throne of David. So my impression of, of verse 3 is this is a very Jewish start 
to uh, this book. And the reason being is uh, in Rome, we have real history, which is Claudius, the emperor of, of Rome, in 49 AD, expelled the Jews from Rome. He died a few years later, and then the Jews started filtering back five or six years later, and the conflicts, the issues that come up in the book of Romans came up because he had Jewish Christians and uh, non-Jewish, non-Christian Jews coming back into in, into Rome, and they were they had to figure out how to how to make a church. All right, verse four: that Jesus is declared to be the Son of God, and he brings up this big thing, which is going to be the resurrection from the dead. Verse five. He, the number one quality that that is put forth with Jesus here is that we have received grace from him. It's mentioned also in, in verse 7. He, we have received grace and apostleship, which is this authority. So Paul speaks with a, you know, with a kind of a stick in his back pocket. Uh, and he's trying to get us to move towards something, which is obedience of faith. That So this is a, this is an argument to get us to change our mind and then, uh, change our behavior. And then who? So is this a Jewish book? Well, verse 5 says it's to all the nations. So, yeah, it starts as a, as a Jewish concept, but then goes into all the nations and, and uh, Gentiles uh, as well. Okay, well, what about all? So the whole world is supposed to get the gospel? Yes. Verse 6, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. So, yes, this is epic in history. Yes, this is epic in 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 nations. But it's very intimate. It's us. It's you. It's me that are called to belong to Jesus Christ, called to belong to Jesus. Do you belong in him? Good final question. All right. And then finally, this all in Rome who are loved by God. This is a love letter. It's the longest love letter, uh, longest epistle in, in the in the New Testament. So this is for us. This is for now. And it's for always. And it's ultimately a love letter. So we're going to start a long, in a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago, and find Jesus in the Old Testament. So we're going to start with some Jewish history and Jewish faith, and we're going to find the seeds of the gospel, the seeds of faith in the in former pioneers in the Old Testament. So as we start this book, I thank you for your courage in in tackling the elephant. So I'm inviting you to eat this elephant with me. Why? Because this elephant of the book of Romans is meant to be eaten. Thanks for listening.